This doesn't make any sense. Neither does this. This does. So does this. But this doesn't. And this, I just don't know what the hell this is. The point I'm getting at here is that we need to discuss Mjolnir armor and some of its features and how they relate to the physics of explosions. explosions. And how a person is wounded in action or killed in action by an explosion. I had this idea pop into my head a couple of nights ago and it keeps waking me up, so I have to make a video on it so I can sleep soundly dish again. <laughs> yeah, you ducked. <laughs>
Secondary blast injuries are more common than primary blast injuries. Secondary blast injuries are the most common cause of mortality in victims of an explosion. Exposed areas of the victim's body are at high risk of penetration of debris that is propelled by the explosion. Often areas of highest risk are the head, neck and extremities. Secondary blast injuries can be obvious or can also be deceiving. The force of the explosion can propel debris many times faster than a bullet. Thus, a seemingly small wound could be hiding quite a devastating injury underneath. Injuries can include fractures, amputations, lacerations, dislocations, and more or less any other type of soft tissue injury. And finally, primary blast injury is caused by the blast wave moving through the body. Since only high order explosives create a blast wave, primary blast injuries are unique to high order explosions. The blast wave causes damage to air-filled organs. The resulting barotrauma can affect the lungs, auditory organs, the eye, the brain, the gastrointestinal tract. Most of the human body handles mild to moderate levels of shock surprisingly well. Severe pressures will cause tissue disruption, however the low pressure shock waves can travel through the human body with little issue. It's the gas pockets inside certain organs that cause the issue, or more specifically the interface between water-filled tissues and gas-filled voids within the body. In the chest wall, which is mostly water, sound moves at roughly 1540 meters per second. In a gas pocket, which is basically air, it moves at roughly 343 meters per second. Therefore, waves moving through the body that hit any gas pockets are forced to slow down at the interface by about 80%. In the lungs, they're forced to slow down to a measly 30 meters per second, a 98% drop in speed. As they are forced to slow, that energy must get transferred somewhere. That's the conservation of energy for you. It gets transferred into the delicate tissues that form the walls of the lungs, causing them to rupture and shred. Blood sprays into the alveoli, filling those gas pockets needed for breathing with fluid. Most people know fluid in the lungs isn't conducive to the ability to breathe. Gas pockets in the intestines can cause similar problems leading to bruising and tearing of the intestinal tract. If a shockwave is strong enough to throw a person, then it's strong enough to kill that person through the damage to their lungs. Some blast victims report feeling as if they were thrown because of the rapid pressure changes of the shockwave. Will, it will manipulate the interior parts of the ears that control balance and orientation. However, in general, if the victim has been thrown by the shockwave, then the victim has not survived. So with all that in mind, we now have to consider Mjolnir armor and some of its functions. First and foremost, Mjolnir has energy shields, capable of deflecting a lot of incoming projectiles. Even after the energy shields fail, the suit is made of over 2 inches of hardened titanium armor plate and a flexible titanium nanocomposite under armor, which is capable of stopping all but the highest of caliber rounds. On top of this, the suit contains a hydrostatic gel, which can be pressurized when within lower or higher pressure environments and keep the occupants safe from impacts and the effects of extreme gravity. Master Chief survived a fall from the edge of space riding a door without any lasting effects. During the fall of Reach, the Spartans that went planetside to protect the generators of the orbital defense platform survived a freefall from near the stratosphere without parachutes, with some even punching through the trunks of trees before smashing into the granite surface of Reach. Some died, but most of them survived. We frequently see Master Chief capable of jumping out of a pelican or off a mountain on Zeta Halo and survive, and during the Shadows of Reach, Blue Team were able to operate almost without hindrance while experiencing an extremely high local G-force, with Chief noting that his suit was capable of keeping them conscious and functional up to 35G. So now with all this knowledge in mind, we can compare and contrast the four categories of injury caused by explosions and how Mjolnir performs in these cases. First things first, quaternary blast injury, which is injury caused by fire, burn, smoke, fumes, gases, toxins, and radiation. Well, Mjolnir is a completely sealed system and can filter 100% of toxins, pathogens, radio fallout, dust, smoke, fumes from the atmosphere, and seal down and recycle an internal air supply for 90 minutes. So we're good there. Mjolnir's hydrostatic gel layer can dissipate the ambient heat and fire from 
plasma with great efficiency, so no real risk of burns there either. And the suit doubles as a radiation suit capable of protecting the occupant from all but the highest energy radioactive particles, so a Spartan wearing Mjolnir armour has no concerns over quaternary blast injury. Tertiary blast injury, which is injury sustained if the person is knocked over or away by blast wind and impacts another object, or the structure collapses with them inside it. Again, Mjolnir's hydrostatic gel layer can protect the wearer from hard impacts. I mean, if that system can keep a Spartan alive from falling from space and hitting the ground, being pushed over should be no problem. Any other object hitting the Spartan as they fall are unlikely to penetrate the hard and soft armour of the suit, and we've already established in both Shadows of Reach and the Halo 5 AWOL trailer that Chief can survive being buried under the structure of a building, so no real concerns there either. Secondary blast injury is sustained by debris and shrapnel being propelled by the blast and striking or penetrating the body. A Spartan wearing Mjolnir armour has a powerful energy shield, two inches of titanium armour, and an extremely resilient under armour suit and close to an inch of interior layers and hydrostatic gel between them and flying debris, so risk of injury here is very, very unlikely, though not impossible. Finally, primary blast injury, which is tissue trauma caused by the shockwave passing through the gas filled areas within the body. The hydrostatic gel layer and the hard exoskeleton shell both serve to reduce the effects of this shockwave. We established in our summary of primary blast injury that the real problem comes from where the shockwave interacts with the boundaries of different densities of object. The boundary between the air carrying the shockwave and the armour plates would dump a large amount of the energy in the form of heat, which we know Mjolnir can tolerate. Then any that continues through would again hit another interface between the hard parts of the suit and the softer inner parts of the suit, again dissipating energy. And finally, the hydrostatic gel layer would pressurise or depressurise to account for the remaining pressure, which would leave very little to actually make it through to the Spartan within, so Mjolnir would once again keep the Spartan alive and well. This means when a rocket explodes on the floor nearby, or a frag grenade detonates, or a fusion coil hits a wall nearby, the explosive force from these should not be able to kill a Spartan. Even getting splattered shouldn't actually kill a Spartan because you're being hit with a vehicle that's travelling a maximum of 50 miles an hour when Chief could hit the floor at terminal velocity and be fine. It might lock the armour up due to overpressurizing of the hydrostatic gel layer but certainly not kill you. The only circumstance where explosions could and indeed should kill a Spartan, is a grenade stick where the force and heat of the explosion is directly attached to the Spartan's body, a rocket exploding directly on the armour, which would drop the shields, damage the armour and allow superheated metal to be driven within the suit, or other similar explosions where they make direct physical contact with the suit. The only exception to this is a danger close nuclear explosion because the ambient heat from that detonation would be sufficient to melt the titanium armour and burn away pretty much anything else that was left. Nearly everything else in addition to this however just wouldn't put a Spartan down. But um, yeah, gameplay reasons. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video consider smashing the like button and leave a comment below on what you'd like me to cover next. Big shout out to my patrons Spartan 10148, the Metarch of my installation, Falcon, Prophet Bear, Mikhail, Sophia, and Ashley, my dutiful monitors, Darian, Scarab, Spartan0137, Anthony, Ghost, Aaron, Chris, Jacob, Sean, Element Zero, Somatic, Jordan J3, Dan, Mr. Keys, Directal, Gunslinger, Jacob, Bandmill, Echo, Evermore, Officer Cat, and Personal Devil, my diligent sub monitors, my fleet of Strato Sentinels, and my loyal enforcers and all the other patrons who have jumped aboard to support the channel, it means more to me than I can accurately put into words. Another shout out to my Tier 0 Transcendent YouTube members, Spartan137, Jacob, Schmitty, Talia, Fenrir and Born Stella, and all the other YouTube members keeping my installation running on that glorious vacuum energy. Shout out to John for, I don't fucking know, 
And if you want more of this kind of content, hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. And consider jumping aboard yourself as a patron or YouTube member to keep the channel alive and kicking. Thanks again for watching, take it easy everyone, and find peace in the domain.